Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a fun video. I love doing these ones. This is my Will I Buy It series. Now this was inspired by Samantha March. She does her own series every week and I don't do them as often as she does, but I like to round up stuff and then just talk about a whole bunch of products all at once. Tell you guys if I will be buying any of this stuff or whether I will be passing. So if you're interested, just keep watching. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and do that down below. I have a giveaway coming up. If that video is up already, I'll go ahead and link it down below in the description box, but I am giving away a ColourPop My Little Pony palette, so if you want to win that palette, go ahead and check out the description box and see how to do that. But without further ado, let's get into my Will I Buy It video. Okay guys, so the first product I wanted to talk about is the new Violet Voss palette that is coming out. It is called the Taupe Notch palette. I like the play on words that they used. And this is going to be out tomorrow. I'm filming this on October 23rd. So this palette will be available tomorrow, which is the 24th, on Sephora.com as well as the Violet Voss website and then Cult Beauty which I think is a UK website for all you people that are not in the United States. I couldn't figure out exactly how much the palette was going to be, but I'm going to guess it's in the $45 range. And you guys know I'm obsessed with Violet Voss. I really went on a bender there for a minute because my friend met me from NM Style Folder and Nisha, um, also on Instagram, are huge fans of the Violet Voss formula, so they convinced me to try it, and of course, I had to get the Holy Grail palette, which, oh my gosh, which looks like this. If you haven't seen it, it's a beautiful palette, does not get enough love in my collection. This is the Laura Lee Violet Voss, Violet Voss palette, which is also really beautiful. And then I have the Matte About You palette, which is honestly my biggest regret as far as Violet Voss goes because as you can tell, I don't think I've even used these, let alone swatched this entire palette. It's just collecting dust. And then this is my favorite. This is the Violet Voss Ride or Die palette. If you guys were going to pick one, I would just get this one because it has basically everything you need. I did review this palette on my channel a while ago. I will go ahead and link that up in the cards. I don't know if this palette is going to end up on Sephora because they are launching on Sephora.com for the first time tomorrow as well. So if you have been meaning to try the brand, I would definitely recommend the Ride or Die palette or the Holy Grail palette. This one is really good too, but I think these are more on trend right now. And the Matte About You is the one I regret the most. And this is why I won't be buying Taupe Notch because I feel like this is gonna be very similar to that palette. And I'm not really into taupe shades, taupe colored eyeshadows. I can have like one or two as far as shimmers go, but I think I already have shadows like that in my collection. I don't need a whole palette devoted just to taupe shades, so I will be passing on that palette. I also saw on Trend Mood, or maybe it was on the Violet Voss Instagram page, that they are also launching the Nicole Concilio palette on Sephora.com as well. So if you've been meaning to pick that up, I believe it is sold out on Violet Voss's website, but I won't be buying that one either because the shades just look like things that I already have in my collection. So I just wanna let you guys know, don't fall into the hype if you have shades like that already. I would stay away from the palette. Makeup Struggles here on YouTube did a really good review, I believe, on the palette, or she talked about it in a video or something like that. If I can find it, I will go ahead and link it up in the cards for you guys to check out as well. Uh, but yeah, I just feel like it's, you know, stuff we've already seen before, and frankly, I just don't have the time or the money or the energy to just keep buying these palettes. So I just wanted to come on here and let you guys know my thoughts on that. The next palette I want to talk about is the Too Faced Chocolate Gold Bar Palette. Now, I just saw a teaser of this on the Trend Mood Instagram page, and honestly, it does look really beautiful, but I've had a decent amount of experience with the Too Faced Glitter eyeshadow formula and I'm really not into it. I feel like this is going to be another huge disappointment. I could be wrong. You guys buy the palette and let me know what you think about it. I'll definitely keep my eyes peeled for review videos once that palette launches, but it does look like it will be available for pre-order December 3rd. I don't know why I'm talking about a palette that's launching in December in October, but that is the world we live in. I'm going to guesstimate that this palette is between 40 to 50 
$50, but yeah, we'll see once it launches. I hope they did well just for the sake of everyone that buys Too Faced products. Frankly, I broke up with them a bit ago. If you guys want to see my brands I'm breaking up with video, I'll go ahead and throw that up in the cards as well. It's kind of a fun one. But yeah, I just I just don't feel like buying anything Too Faced right now. So that is my story and I'm sticking to it. The next thing I want to talk about is the Dose of Colors Hidden Treasures palette. Now this was limited edition by the brand Dose of Colors, which is an indie brand uh, that recently came out with a very successful collection with Desi Perkins and Katie Lusterlux on YouTube. So they're definitely getting out there. They're on sale now at Ulta.com. So if you didn't want to buy from them directly, you can buy it on Ulta, which I think is a great feature for a lot of these indie brands because you can now return to Ulta as well, which is great. As far as the Hidden Treasures palette goes, I was really interested in it when it first launched and I thought it was a beautiful palette, but I feel like I also have all of these shades in my collection already. It's a $50 palette. You get 10 shades and I honestly hate how it's spread radically arranged. I feel like that would just drive me completely insane. I also am not a big fan of the Dose of Colors formula. I returned my Marvelous Mobs and Bake Browns palette. I also returned my The Girls palette by Desi and Katie. I just did not get along with any of their formulas. It was a little too powdery for me. The mattes and then the shimmer shades in the Desi and Katie palette were way too dry. I've seen quite a few review videos on that collaboration and I feel like a lot of people didn't like the eyeshadow palette. Palette. So just something I wanted to throw out to you guys. If you do have the Desi and Katie palette, I would honestly recommend contacting Dose of Colors customer service. They were really nice to me and let me return the palette. So if you're not satisfied with it, I would definitely recommend returning it because of course we all work really hard for our money and I don't see a problem with returning something you're not going to get any use out of. The other palette that I'm so so excited for and you guys know how much I love ColourPop is the new Sephora X ColourPop collection that's coming out. Now these are some of my little ColourPop palettes that I do have in my collection. I actually have all four of their little palettes that they've come out with so far. But this one with Sephora is going to have 15 shades and it's set to launch on October 31st. I really do hope I get my hands on this guys. I don't know what time it's going to launch. I don't really want to stay up late waiting for palettes to launch, but I have done that, especially with a lot of these holiday palettes. I did end up staying up or like sleeping on the couch till like 2 a.m. setting an alarm. So I didn't wake up my husband, placing the order, and then going upstairs to go to bed, which I think is freaking ridiculous, but for the love of makeup, you know what I mean? So I really do hope I get my hands on it. It's gonna be a $26 palette and it's all shimmers, which is really the trend for holiday this year. I just don't know since things are planned out so far in advance for pre like launches, like everything's planned like a year ahead. How did everyone decide that they were gonna make all glitter palettes like Fenty Beauty and who else came out? Oh, uh, Urban Decay did an all glitter, like the metallic palette. So it's really, really interesting that brands managed to do this stuff. I, I just don't know how it all happens. Anyway, next palette I want to talk about, or palettes, I should say, are the new ones that they just announced today by Huda Beauty. She's coming out with four mini palettes. There's going to be Smoky Obsession, Electric Obsession, Warm Browns Obsession, and Mauve Obsession. And honestly, they all speak to me on a spiritual level. I feel like I'm going to end up getting all of them, but I don't know if I really need all of them. They are $27. I love a good baby size palette because you can take it on the go. It's just so easy to reach for in my makeup collection. They're easy to store. I just feel like they get the job done so, so well. So I am really excited to see how those palettes turn out. I do have two of her eyeshadow palettes, the only two she has currently. This is the Rose Gold palette, which I did not like, but the Huda Beauty Desert Dust palette is amazing. She did reformulate the whole thing. I think she did a really good job because there wasn't a lot of positivity when it came to the Rose Gold palette. There were a few people that really liked the palette, but overall, I think she definitely gypped us for $65. Now, $27 for four palettes really is going to add up quick. So I think brands are really catching on that they can, you know, sell us less product and make more money. The Colored Rain just came out with some mini palettes. I picked up two of those. Those were freaking expensive. 
for six eyeshadows, I paid $36, which I think is honestly criminal, but I did it anyway because I love colored brains so much. So I will have reviews on those palettes if they are up. I will link them down below. I will have a swatch party go up soon though, so check that out if you've been interested in those palettes and want to see swatches from the ones that I picked up. Now another thing that I did see on Trend Mood is Persona Cosmetics. It is an indie brand founded by a YouTuber, of course, and I've seen a lot of people talk about how wonderful this palette is before it became available on Ulta. It is now available on Ulta.com online only for $32, and I think um, this is a great way for people to, again, take a risk and try an indie brand because if you don't like the palette, you can return it. Like I said, I've seen a lot of positive reviews on this palette, but I personally am not planning on picking this up because it literally looks like all the other palettes in my collection currently. So let me know what you guys think if you have this palette definitely let people know what you think of the palette is it worth it I feel like $32 is not that bad but I don't need to be spending that kind of money another brand collab I want to talk about is Gigi Hadid collabing with Maybelline Cosmetics honestly love the packaging I feel like the cosmetic industry has figured out that everyone loves a nice neutral nude packaging from Fenty to Kim Kardashian to now Gigi and Maybelline but honestly guys with these collaborations it's like great she's a supermodel she's beautiful but really is Gigi Hadid wearing Maybelline makeup on a daily basis I think not. They just found somebody famous, slapped their name on it, decided to come up with a collaboration. I know she is like their brand ambassador or whatever, but every once in a while I'll see like things about Kendall Jenner, who's also really good friends with Gigi Hadid, and I feel like models honestly don't wear that much makeup. Like we would think that they do, but I swear Instagrammers, YouTubers, they're the people that wear a ton of makeup. Sometimes the things we do are so, so unnatural and ridiculous and we create our own trends and that's totally fine. But I just feel like I don't get why sometimes bigger brands pick people that don't really wear makeup. Like that's not her area of expertise. Like, yes, she's beautiful, but she's a model. You know what I mean? It really is like one of those like, is it, does it really make sense? It really doesn't make that much sense if you really think about it for a model to sell cosmetics. Like if Gigi Hadid had her own YouTube channel and she was doing like YouTube videos on the side, I would totally get it, but that's not her brand. Like if you guys watch Shay Mitchell, I know she has her own YouTube channel. She's the girl from Pretty Little Liars. Like that to me would make a little bit more sense. Like when she collabed with Smashbox, like that made sense to me to sell like the cover shot palettes because she actually has like a makeup slash lifestyle related YouTube channel. But Gigi Hadid and Maybelline, which is like a drugstore brand, and she models for like a really, really high-end designers. Like this lady is not on the JCPenney catalog, guys. So little bit weird. I just think, you know, Makeup Struggles did a really, really great video on brands and collabs and like making sure it made sense. And this one just doesn't make sense to me. The pricing is ridiculously all over the place. They have like a $30 palette and then they have like a $14 palette or something. And it's just, just a hot mess express. And I just don't plan on being involved. I am not trying to keep up with this, with this collaboration. So let me know you guys' thoughts. Did you pick up anything from this collaboration? If you did, what was the quality like? Was it worth the extra price you paid? Next thing that is launching, I guess, or relaunching is the Jaclyn Hill X Morphe palette. And here is mine. I haven't even used this palette that much, guys, and it's already pretty freaking dirty. And if you follow me on Instagram, I usually like to do Instagram lives. And I went on a little bit of a rant about the Jaclyn Hill palette going to Ulta and I, I know you guys have all probably heard this already. This topic has literally been beaten to death like a dead horse. Is that a, is that how people say it? Anyway, I'm just like so over Morphe like right now. I love their brushes because they're so inexpensive, but honestly at this point I really don't want to support them because I think they're fucking shady as hell. Honestly, like I just don't understand like all the lies that Jaclyn Hill comes on YouTube and Snapchat and she just like spins and spins and spins all day and I'm just like why like why are you lying to us like I'm sorry like I'm not like a um, beauty mogul and I didn't go to Harvard but I do have a business degree <laughs> and I feel like if you had like a little bit of common sense like you would know that Morphe going into Ulta was not like planned in the last couple of months and this Jacqueline Hill palette I think has been out for like four months 
I'm sure it took Morphe about four months at least to broker a deal with Ulta, which has like a thousand stores around the country. So really sketched out by the way Jacqueline was like, oh, I didn't, you know, Ulta wants the palette to be zhuzhed up so it like stands out in their displays. And I'm like, so how is Morphe positioning themselves at Ulta? Are they going to be on the high end side of the store? Or are they going to be on the drugstore side of the store? Because this palette is $38 and now they're revamping the packaging so it's glossy so it doesn't get dirty. It's all fucking sketchy and they're putting all the names on the back. Like why didn't she do that before? So you're getting obviously a palette that's gonna cost more to make because this whole color card is now on the back of the palette whereas before it was this cheap shit that just says Morphe X Jacqueline Hill so obviously it's gonna cost more to package it in nicer packaging but people are still spending the same price so it really really fucking blows my mind it honestly pisses me off because I used to love Jaclyn Hill, but I feel like once you watch her for long enough, you just realize like how full of shit she is. And honestly, it's like she doesn't really upload any content. She does videos like every once in a while and it's just not worth it. Like I just... I'm so sick of like supporting beauty gurus that don't give a fuck about the people that you know support them and care about them and she'll like come on snapchat and talk all day but it's like this is your full-time gig like makeup is your full-time gig it's not that hard for you to film a couple of videos consistently do some tutorials and stop pushing morphe you know i'm just like so over it um, so if you guys are interested in like the gossip drama there's so many good channels to watch so i'm gonna leave all of that to those channels but i'm just so mad and honestly, you guys, I don't think you should buy this palette. I really don't. I feel like we should collectively, like, band together as a society and vote with, vote with our dollar and really show Morphe that it's not fair for them to keep exploiting people the way they do. So that is my spiel on that. I'm done. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. If you think I'm crazy, that's totally fine. Just let me know in a respectful manner so I don't have to block you on my channel. Please don't attack any of my subscribers either. I will block your ass. I swear to God. I just, I had some people just go a little bit over the top in my Pat McGrath swatch video and it's fine if you want to come for me I will defend myself but once you start attacking my subscribers I will block you because I personally do not give a shit anyways next palette I want to talk about is the Too Faced Clover palette now that is available I believe on the Trend Moon Instagram page it did say that it went on sale yesterday I believe it's $49 palette it is 18 shades and honestly I think it's so gimmicky. I'm so sick of buying things related to Gerard Blend Blandino or whatever his name is. First of all, he's like 50 years old. He's an old man that sells makeup that looks like toy makeup. And now he's selling us a makeup palette based off of his dog. Like, I get it. It's like to support animals and like animal shelters and all this jazz but you're also owned by a parent company that isn't cruelty free so it's all very confusing and I just don't want this palette so that's all I'm going to say about that. Next we did get a sneak peek of the Kat Von D collab with Divine. I don't really know who that is so don't get mad at me about it but I did post a picture of the sneak peek of this palette and I was like I don't get it guys I really don't know what I would do with this palette. It's definitely very artsy. It's very Kat Von D. It goes with our brand. So let me know what you guys think. I'm going to open this one up to you guys. I'm personally not planning on buying this palette, but who the fuck knows? I might change my mind. Neon may become like a huge trend in 2018 and everyone will just start wearing highlighter shades in our crease. Who the fuck knows? So let me know what you guys think. It's set to launch on February of next year and there are eight shades in the palette. So very, very interesting stuff from Kat Von D, as always. Okay, the next palette I wanted to give a little shout out to is this Italian brand called Nabla, I think is how you say it. It's called Nabla Cosmetics. I'll throw up a picture in the corner here. It is 32 euros and 31 cents, I guess. Is, is that how you would say it? I don't know. Looks gorgeous, but I'm not going to buy it. I did see a review from another YouTuber. I think her name is Angelica. I don't remember her last name, but she does really cool review reviews, guys, and she's really into indie brands. So if you're going to look for a good reviewer, I think she's pretty good. I'll go ahead, if I can remember her channel, I will go ahead and link it down below for you guys to check out. But I wanted to mention this palette because 
It looks interesting, but I'm personally not planning on buying it. It reminds me too much of the Queen of Hearts palette and the Ice Cream palette by Beauty Bakery. So because of that, I won't be getting it. But she said shipping was really good and she can mostly make the palette work. She seemed to really like it, but personally, I'm going to pass on that. Another sneak peek that I saw was the Urban Decay Troublemaker eyeshadow palette. Now, the caption literally said, Our mascara needs a companion. It needs an eyeshadow palette. So we're coming out with an eyeshadow palette. And honestly, those shades were so boring. I was like, really? Like, this is, your in this is what you thought of when you thought of Troublemaker? Like, it was bizarre. So I don't know when that palette's coming out. I didn't see anything specific about it. But if you guys know, definitely let me know your thoughts. I, I thought it was really bizarre. Last thing I'm going to talk about in this palette edition of my Will I Buy It is the MAC Holiday Collection. They have two palettes that they're called the Snowball Eye Compact. There's gold and rose gold and it has six shades, four regular shades and two of their Dazzle eyeshadows at $29.50. I also did see they have the Holiday Snowball Extra Dimension eyeshadow. I think they had about five shades. I actually picked up one because I swatched it in Ulta at my local Ulta and it was a really beautiful duochrome. It reminded me so much of the Pat McGrath Labs duochromes. I was like, give it to me. So I bought it and I also bought one of their highlighters. Even though I'm on a highlighter no buy, I kind of picked it up as a collector's item um, because that packaging is like too beautiful for me not to have. So we'll see once it gets here. I'll, I'll let you guys know if I think it's worth the splurge or not. But yeah, as far as their Snowball Eye Compacts, I won't be picking those up. I've never heard good things about the MAC eyeshadow palettes. I feel like they have decent single shadows, but as far as their eyeshadow palettes, I've never heard anything good. They did even reduce the price of their single eyeshadows. I just don't think eyeshadows are max niche right now. I feel like ColourPop, ABH, you know, those brands have definitely surpassed MAC cosmetics at this time. So I won't be picking up any of those, but let me know if you guys did. Okay guys, I feel like I was talking so, so fast. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions, concerns, brilliant insights. I would love to hear from you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.